Dear kind Father, Lord, we come to you this morning thanking you for your goodness unto us, dear God. Lord, how you have watched over every last one of us, how you have saved us, you've given us grace, and we thank you for that this morning. We're asking you in the name of Jesus to bless our pastor, dear God. Lord, take him out of himself, Lord, give him free course, dear Heavenly Father. Lord, let your anointing rain down upon him this morning, dear God. Lord, we thank you for him, dear God. Take him out of himself. Let him walk the aisles or whatever he has to say. Lord, give him the words to say, dear God. We just thank you. We want to glorify you this morning because you deserve the highest praise. Lord, we realize that the devil has no place, my God, in here this morning. So we take a rebuke against him in the name of Jesus. Lord, you have free course. Encourage hearts. Encourage souls, dear God. Lord, save some dear God. Lord, walk the aisles this morning, dear God, because we realize we're living in the last days, dear God. And Lord, you're going to split the clouds, and Lord, we want to be ready. So help us each one, dear God. Encourage hearts, and we'll praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You may be seated. Let me turn your Bibles to 1 Samuel chapter 17. And we're going to read down to verse number 11. And then we'll walk our way through this graphic account in Scripture to bring us from a chronological perspective to where we're at here in the history. Saul. first king of Israel after the Israelites saw the other nations and they wanted to be like them and they asked for a king God told the prophet it's okay they didn't reject you they rejected me and he gave them a king Saul was the first king Saul, by this point, had already violated and he had eliminated himself because he did not fully obey the Lord. God had given him instructions and he did partially what God had for him to do but he didn't fully. Whenever God is endeavoring to use someone, that person is technically in God's stead. There's God's representative. And it's important to have full obedience, full obedience. Paul Saul, for whatever reason, chose not to fully obey. He killed most, but he left some. And therefore, God eliminated. You say, why is that so important? Because God never selects someone to lead something or to help with something for them to lead. God wants to lead. God wants to lead. So he needs individuals that will let him do it and not pick and choose and do what they think is right, what they feel. Pray it through, get the mind of God and let the chips fall where they may. Well, afterwards, God told the prophet to go to a man named Jesse. He said that I've eliminated Saul. Remember this. God will always have a ram in the bush. Yes, yes. <laughs> Remember this. Nobody's irreplaceable. Get off if you want to. <laughs> Think it all revolves around you if you want to. Study biblical, study the Bible. So here, Saul got too big. A lot of times when individuals 
is, is God is endeavoring to use or this, that, and the other. God will say something to people. You know what? When you was little, in your own sight, many people can't handle being used. I even was listening to some of the Sunday school, and the brother was bringing out, some people can't even, let alone being used by, they can't handle compliments. They can't handle just, <sighs> so here, Saul was removed, and a lot of that, when you see removal, pride is somewhere in it. You know, he thought more, I, I know what to do, I, I, I got to. So he told the prophet, go down to a man named Jesse's house. I got a ram down there. So the prophet got his ink horn, and he went to go down and anoint the future king. And listen, um, we're going to the message, but remember this. The whole word is a message if you're in tune. So he goes down to a man named Jesse's house, and he takes the oil. He goes down there, and I'm going to let you know, even the most spiritual among us have to be careful for the natural man to infuse itself into trying to understand the will of God. Let me say that again. Even the most spiritual among us have to be careful when we endeavor to use the natural propensities, our natural mindset, our natural thoughts. When it comes to fulfilling the perfect will of God, the perfect will of God, you'll never be able to find it out by your own natural mind, your natural wisdom, your natural strength. That's why you must pray things through. God's ways are higher. Than our ways. So he goes down there. And this is a, a man of God. A, a, a prophet. A, a great man of God. He takes the oil. And he goes in. And he listened to God. And he said go down to Jesse's house. He didn't go down to Phil's house. Or somebody else's house. He went to Jesse's house. He listened. Then he goes in there. And he says okay let me look. Okay Jesse got this, these sons sitting there. Big no doubt tall. Six foot whatever sitting there. He grabs up to him and says okay. I know it's, and God says No. Don't you anoint him. He said, okay. Oh, there he's right, right there. He's just not as big as him, but just go. God said, stop. Here, stop. Don't pour the oil on. Stop. Don't pour the oil on him. He goes, to, okay, if it's not him, then it's got to be him. He said, you know what? Come here. Come here. Come here. I know you're a prophet. I know you're mightily used in this, that, and the other. Come here. Let me tell you. Man, let me teach you a lesson. Man looks on the outward. Man goes by what they see. Man goes by what looks good, what looks spiritual, what look. Don't you ever try to impress man with your spirituality. And don't you ever let somebody cause you to be impressed by some outward demonstration. I'm looking holy. No, no, no. You better produce holy fruit. I've got my big old Bible. I'm spirit. No, 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 no. It ain't about you. Okay. It's some people to call you a man of God, you, a woman of God, because you got your big Bible. You better live out what's in that Bible. So God told him, do not go with the most big, the strongest looking one, the most uh, attractive looking one, the one that looks most like a king. See, sometimes God chooses that which don't look the part because that's where he get the most glory. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. So don't feel like, well, I'm, so, I'm such a deep sinner. I can't, if I get saved, God will never use me. You, you might be the one he really want to use the most. Amen. So he can show the world, I can take this no good nothing who's messing his life up, sleeping around with everything that moved. And smoked whatever it could, could be smoked. Involved, played a lot, did lie, stole, did all this stuff. But oh, let me show the world with just one drip of blood. Let me show the world with just see what one one drip of my blood just 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 whoosh, 
over them. Let, let me show the world what I'm able to do. I'll take an unlearned fisherman. I'll take my God, a tax collector, which was the lowest ebb of society. I'll take, amen, the one that was persecuting the church, and I'll make them the best there is. Yeah. Yeah. To my glory and honor, God would say. So here, God has sent the prophet down to Jesse's house. Jesse had anointed. In actuality, what happened was, is that Jesse, when he found out what was going on, he didn't even invite David to the party. He, he even said, I know. <laughs> it's amazing when your own people ain't there to overlook you. Your own folk don't think nothing of you. Your own people say, not her, not him, not him. It's a man. Sometimes it can creep into the church. The own saints don't even. And the Bible said that a prophet is not without honor. But it. So David. So David wasn't even invited to the party. Don't you be discouraged when you ain't invited to the party. Don't you be discouraged when you overlook. Don't you be discouraged when they keep over calling everybody but you. Don't you be. You just might be David. all got done and I'm going to tell you man I mean uh, uh, the prophet got done Sam he said hold on and when he looked he could have said you know what it's got to be a uh, number seven it's got to be him because it ain't nobody left but thank God he had enough Holy Ghost yeah. he could have just been like okay it's now it's not just logic but it's reasoning also he sent me to Jesse's house Jesse called his sons into the house I logically went to the biggest one and then the next biggest next busy, biggest and God let me know it's none of them so reason tells me it's got to be the last one because there's none left but he said I, I, I'm not feeling the liberty I'm, I'm not I, I can't feel my uh, I don't feel the anointing to anoint I, I, I don't feel God's tell it, Jesse, Jesse, do, do you, is this all of them? Is, is there one more? Is, is there one more? Jesse said, yeah, but I'm sure you don't want him. He way out. I don't even keep him around. He way out just keeping the sheep and he just. So Samuel said, I learned a lesson. I learned a lesson. I just learned to try to go to the biggest. The, that's probably the one we're at. David come in here with all sheep hairs all over him, looking look, all little boy walking in, looking all small. Yes, daddy. <laughs> that's going to be the king. Amen. God said, there she is. There he is. There they are. Go over there and anoint. So David was anointed that day. You say, Brother Lee, so we're going to read today about his installation? No, we're not there yet. But you said, Brother Lee, he had been anointed prior to this chapter, several chapters before. He was anointed. So we, we should be reading today. You're going to show us his, his installation. We're going to read about David's installation surface. Praise God. No, no, no. We're not there yet. Then why are you reading it? Well, let me give it to you like this. There's always a period of time between God's anointing and his appointing. There's always going to be something, and it's not just time, but there's a preparation. Because when God appoints, he wants to appoint for the long haul. That's why you never be eager when it comes to kingdom affairs to go too quickly into anything. Take your time. You may try to go to the top of corporate. You may try to go to the top of the university. But when it comes to the kingdom affairs, it's a total different blueprint. Many times, God has to break you all the way down. God has to purge all elements. 
And you may say, well, I got sanctified. I'm talking about way beyond sanctification. Just go with me this morning. Way beyond sanctification. I'm talking about breaking down just, just every element of what you thought, just the way you think. Why? Because he, there was a coach one time, and this coach, I don't want to say his name, but he had a premise that a player would come in and he would basically break the player all the way down. All that he learned in high school, all that he learned from any other coach, all that he thought he read, all the last two years that you've been reading all these sites and looking at the stars behind your name and figure out, break all that down. And then he built them back up. God oftentimes will purge a person all the way down, almost to like it ain't nothing left. You're right. Almost to the point, it ain't nothing left of them to begin to build them back up. So here, the count that we're going to cover today is after the anointing, but before the appointing, there was a particular way that God wanted to know him and that God wanted him to know God. And he was being sent by his father to feed, send food to his brothers who were away at war. He was too small to be chosen to go. The country no doubt thought he didn't have anything to offer in war on that level. So his father sent him with food to his brothers. But God had a different mission for him. This was a moment of proving and a moment of getting to know God. I believe that there are some that God is ready to take to another level. The Bible in the Old Testament is the type. It's to show us blueprints. Tonight, this morning, we're going to cover a blueprint. And when David went to the battle, a giant showed up and was threatening the people when he showed up. And that's where we're coming into the story here. And if we were to title this morning's message, we would title it, The Ways the Giants Are Slain. The Ways the Giants Are Slain. There's some very graphic insights that he provides us in this blueprint that would help us when we face our giants in life, major situations. Can they fall? How do they fall? Let us look at that this morning. Pray for us. Verse number one. Now the Philistines <coughs> gathered together their armies. The Philistines were the arch enemies of Israel. Come on. To battle. And were gathered together at Shukov. They were in war, kind of like Russia and Ukraine. Come on and read. Which belonged to Judah uh -huh. and pitched between Shukov and Azekah. Come on. In Ephraim. Yes. And Saul and the men of Israel were gathered together and pitched by the valley of Elah and set to battle in array against the Philistines. And the Philistines stood on a mountain on one side, and Israel stood on a mountain on the other side. He's painting a picture. Come on, read. And there was a valley between them. And there went out a champion out of the camp of the Philistines named Goliath of God, whose height was six cubits and a span. And he had a helmet of brass upon his head, and he was armed with a coat of mail. And the weight of the coat was 5,000 shekels of brass. And he had greaves of brass upon his legs, and a target of brass between his shoulders. And the staff of his spear was like the way a weaver's beam, and his spear's head weighed 600 shekels of iron, and one bearing a shield went before him. And he stood and cried unto the armies of Israel, and said unto them, Why are ye come out to set battle in array? Am I not, am not I a Philistine, and ye servants of Saul? Choose you a man for you, and let him come down to me. And if he be able to fight with me and to kill me, then will we be your servants. 
But if I prevail against him and kill him, then shall ye be our servants and serve us. And the Philistines said, I defy the army of Israel this day. Give me a man that we may fight together. When Saul and all Israel heard those words of the Philistines, they were dismayed and greatly afraid. Now David was the son of Ephrathite of Bethlehem, Judah. Okay, stop right there. For time's sake, we're going to skip down to verse number 22. Covering that was just simply David at home keeping the flock. His father sent him to the battle to give his brother some things to eat. Come on and read. And David left his carriage in the hand of the keeper of the carriage and ran into the army and came and saluted his brother. And as he talked with them, behold, there came up the champion of the Philistines <coughs> of Goth, Goliath by name, out of the armies of the Philistines, and spake according to the same words. And David heard them. And all the men of Israel, when they saw the man, fled from him and were sore afraid. And the men of Israel said, Have you seen this man that has come up? Surely to defy Israel is he come up, and he shall be, and it shall be that the man that killeth him, the king will enrich him with great riches, and will give him his daughter, and make his father's house free in Israel. And David spake to the men that stood by him, saying, What shall be done to the man that killed this Philistine, and taketh away the reproach from Israel? For who is this uncircumcised Philistine, that he should defy the armies of the living God? Stop right there. So here we began to see some of the blueprint unfolded. And many individuals have hindered their walk with God, their place with God, because there was something big in their life or in their experience that they had to deal with. And they have, they came to a point, am I going to deal with this thing or am I going to run from it? The first thing that we see is that you can't run from the giant. David, at that point, when he saw, oh my goodness, he could have simply said, hey, I'm dropping this off. I'm out. I'm not, I'm not dealing with this. And that's what the enemy wants a person to do. When you're faced with a giant, a first thing you have to understand, one of the first things you have to understand is you cannot run from giants. You cannot run from giants. I'm going to break this down, but you have to get this first point. When you are battling a major, this is not a normal situation in your life. This is not something that you, and listen, live long enough. You're going to face some giants. You may say, well, I ain't facing no giants. I, keep living, my God. You're going to face some major situations in your life. And we're going to give you the blueprint by the word of God today. How do we deal with it? And the first thing you have to understand is you cannot run from giants. One of the reasons why, because their legs are longer than yours. They're going to catch you. <laughs> you run from the giants, you're going to increase your fear, and you're going to increase their courage. You can't run from the giant. You can't run from the battle with the giant. Because you'll never slay a giant running backwards. I've seen some people get chased by somebody and they're trying to fight this way and they're running away and they're hitting. You may inflict a blow, but you're not going to slay a giant running from it. And let me say this. You can't. You have faced, the reason why you don't run from a giant, that, that giant is partially after your today, but primarily after your tomorrow. Amen. Just work with me this morning, saints. There's been families that had giants that they've never just dealt with. Okay. There was, there was, God went to Abraham. He told him, Abraham, because of your faith in me, you're going to have a baby. 
I know y'all 90 years old, 100 years old. Y'all gonna have a baby, and I'm gonna bless you because of how faithful you've been to me. And, and, and uh, I'm gonna send them to a land, and it's gonna be flowing with milk and honey. It's gonna be great. It's gonna be awesome. That's the part of you in here. So you have a lot of descendants in the most productive area ever. Okay, so Abraham descendants get into it with jealousy, sell their brother. He go down to slavery, end up going to prison. Then he end up becoming the prime minister of Egypt. It's just amazing that, amen, sometimes what the devil means for bad, God used those situations for good, amen. And also everything that you go through, I don't care, send me the, I'm a prosper there. See, when you got favor with God and man, no matter where you go, you gonna prosper there. In jail, uh, he, well, he went into slavery, prospered there, prospered too much. He caught the slave master's wife attention <laughs> because he had such a glow on him. <laughs> so you better be careful when you got a glow on you. <laughs> anyway, oh Lord. So anyway, so any, he ended up prospering, but another king came but didn't know him. And they enslaved the Israelites. But they were only down there for so many years. God raised up a Moses. Moses let the people out. Moses sent some spies and said, we remember the land God had for us. God said, I didn't just bring you out of Egypt. I want you to go to the land. I didn't just bring you out of drugs, alcohol, and free you from sin and make you a new creature. I want you to go on to Canaan. Come on. Go on to Canaan. I remember that song growing up. It would say, come over in to the Canaan land. You know what? I used to watch that song when we, we, we would listen to the song. But I would be, because we sat over here and one of the ministers in the church, his family sat up here. Their last name was Canes. And every time they sung that song, their father would stand up. You know, it was just like a little bit of bouncing and stuff. Come over in to the Canaan land. Amen. But amen. That's talking about a type, amen, of sanctification. All right. So here... David, this was their land. The Philistines was trying to stay in the land that was promised to them. You see, a giant is not, if they would have left, the giant would have had no problem with them. But the giant didn't want them to receive what God had for them. You see, giants in your life is not just after your today. Yes, they would love to eliminate you, but guess what? They would love if you just leave them alone and let them stay in your life because you'll never go where God wants you to go unless you deal with them. If you don't, my God, run. If you just simply disregard them, let them stay there, they'll just provoke you every now and then. And they will obviously see giants are different. They may not even try to take you out right away. They're okay if you just let them stay between you and where God would have for you to go. You and the land God has for you. You and the anointing God has for you. You and the authority that God has for you. Too many people and even saints have learned to live with giants because that giant understood the big picture and said, I'm not going to just take you out, but let me stay and let me have residency in your experience. And you will never go. You ain't understand my assignment. Some spirits are meant to go and take you and might get back to Egypt, but that's not my plan. That's not my objective. But I just want to stay. And prevent you from ever getting what God has for you to get. And I'm going to stay right here in your experience. I hope you disregard regard me. I hope you just fan at me every now and then. I hope you just pat at me every now and then. But don't follow the blueprint to deal with me. Because I want you to know you will never go where God actually had for you to go. You'll never be, you'll never have a certain authority, a certain way, a certain, a certain power. You'll never, you'll talk good you, 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 and you'll have some victories. You'll defeat some enemies, but I'm telling you, you will never ever go. There are some people right now that are not in their destiny. They're not where God really has for them. Why? Because there's something that's bigger, that needs to be slain. Giant of fear. 
Sometimes it's something in their past. Something way in their past that happened or they've been dealing with from childhood. Sometimes it's a certain victory, a certain victory that they just cannot seem to get. Every once in a while they get some inspiration and they hold it down, but there's a slaying of that thing that never takes place. And I'm telling you on the authority of God's word, there is a place that God has. As God is endeavoring to end the seventh seal, wrap up the world, needing a glorious, militant, strategic army, a remnant that will go forth on the white horse, conquering and to conquer. Where there's honest people that honestly need help with the skills to go decipher it, my God, cultivate, raise it up, strengthen them, and on to the next assignment. But he's letting us know there are some individuals that may not go back to Egypt, but they will not be able to be used at a certain level. Why? Because there's some giants somewhere in their experience. They may not say nothing about it, and they may come to church, wave their hand, but if you honestly understood how God is viewing them and what they really know on the inside, if they were to evaluate their own experience, and they would say, there is some, sometimes it's just an attitude. There's an attitude I've never got away with. Why? Because I got it from my mama, and she got it from her mama, and I just feel a certain way about anybody. I don't care what you say. I will let you know how I feel. You're not going to talk to me anyway. Well, you know what? There's a place that God wants to take you that you will never get as long. You may stay here, sing a song. You did a good job. I understand that. But guess what? You got a giant attitude. It ain't always noticeable. Why? It takes certain things to provoke it. You see, the giant don't show up all the time. But I tell you, when he will show up. He will show up when you're trying to go into your destiny, when you're trying to go to another level. As long as you want to stay where you're at, sometimes you'll be fine. But try to go to that next level. You'll look over there and you'll see, whoa, whoa, it's something there. Sometimes that giant is just flesh. It's flesh. They never slew the flesh. Never. No, no, no. Crucifixion. No. There's a victory over the flesh they've never had. It just never had. Every one, they go well for a while, but every few months there's a failure. Boom. Then they go well for again. Praise God. Get prayer. Boom. Praise God. Let me, they get some inspiration. Let me go hit it. No, 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 no. Don't hit it. It's got to be eliminated. We're going to break this down to give us the blueprint and the inspiration to deal with it today. Sometimes in marriages, there's giants. They learn to live with it. They, they, they good. They coexist. They just say, every once in a while, it'll come to the brink of almost get out of my life. I don't care. Get, get, I, I'm, I'm, I'm struck. Then they'll struggle to try to make it look good and try to, uh, uh this, that, and try to make it what they've always thought marriage should be. And, it, but listen, there's a giant somewhere. I don't know. I don't know where it's at, but there's a giant somewhere that has to be slain before you can get to your destiny, where you can really be, what you could really have. We're going to break this down, but the first thing we have to understand, the giant is real, and we can't run, we can't disregard it. I tell you, the longer you disregard, giants like to eat. <laughs> study any historical context, study Jack and the Beanstalk. <laughs> the giant wants to eat him up. The giant likes to eat. The longer you let giants linger, they get bigger and bigger. Remember one time I appreciated a brother. He just had sent a text from another state. We were sharing with him a few weeks ago, early in our experience, we ended up dealing with a giant. A lot of times young brothers will get saved and they don't understand Zion. And they're thinking that, okay, I get saved. First of all, it's a struggle just fully letting the world go, even though it's just saved. Fully letting the world go for real, all of it go. Every relationship, ungodly soul tie, ungodly relationship to just cut it. I'm done. I'm over. It's oh, don't call me. I'm not coming over. You know, it's over. It's most don't make it there. Some don't make it there. But those that do make it past that, where they're able to break off. I'm done. See, cry my whatever I got to do. I'm done. Well, what about emotions? When you get saved, you ask God to forgive you, but your emotions don't go nowhere. You're absolutely right. But guess what? There's something called reaping. Don't think God's going to wipe you so you did all this stuff and just boom. No. You have to hurt that away. Pray that away. 
suffer that away. Why? Because if some stuff is going too easy, you might go back into it. But when you go far enough to get the real victory and you cry and you pray and you get before God and you get that thing brought down and you get that game, your Lord, I'm not picking this phone up again in my life. They never coming over here again. Oh, God, Lord, you got to help me. You got to cry. My God, get up and pray. Cry. Stop dreams and everything. Yo, cry. Pray again. And you get the victory. I tell you, you go that far. You ain't got to worry about it ever. That didn't happen just from coming to the altar and saying, God, forgive me. I want to be saved. Oh, no. When you get saved, there's some giants of your past that you still got to deal with. Get the keys of the church if you have to. Go on a two-day, three-day, four-day. Do whatever you got to do. But you go far enough and you deal with those giants and God will give you the inspiration and grace. You ain't got to worry about them no more. But after that, I didn't understand. The, the renewing of your mind. See, when you get saved, when you get in the world, it's not just spirits. You got a total different mindset. You, the, the mind of Zion, the ways of Zion are completely different than the ways of the world. It's not just about do we don't sin. It's a total different operation, a total different. And you need to be in Zion long enough to understand that before you try to jump off into the heavy, deep waters of things. So I get saved now. Wrestle with that. And then I come and say, guess what? You know what? All right, I'm saved now. Okay, I ain't messing with the world no more. Let me see. I'm going uh, I'm to I'm navigate my way through Zion. I ain't going to go to the world. I'm going to stay in Zion. Not understanding my calling. Not understanding God. Not understanding Zion. Not, I just didn't want to hurt. And I was still at the same mindset of the old. But just I kind of sanctified it. Oh, I'm preaching better than you. You know what I'm saying. You just, I ain't doing dirt, but I, it's the same mindset, okay? And I didn't even know how to evaluate. Let me find the cutest, this, this, the one that got the best shape. Let me, let me find the one that's the cutest here. Let me find this. Here. And I didn't understand Zion. I didn't understand the way of God. I didn't understand patience. I didn't understand that God is a God of order. There's some things that's got to be solidified, established, and put in place before I'm able to be a priest, prophet, and provider. Before I'm understanding my calling, my position, my this, that, and the other. I, don't, I didn't understand all of that. I just thought I'd get saved and I, now I can do what I want to do. But the steps of a good man are ordered of the Lord. And I said, whoa, before I really understood that, I'd allow the giant of affection to go in my spirit. And I'm like, oh, and then God let me know, no, this ain't, ain't the time. It ain't this, let this, it ain't, it ain't, this is not of me, this is of you. Then I try to wrestle with, you know, you try to reason it. Well, no, I'm gonna, well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put it on the shelf. I'm gonna do it. I said, no, this giant gotta go. I said, I need to go down to the church. You see, when you see, I said, no, no, no. I, and I'm going to tell you this. I didn't call for the ministry. Can you tell me? No, no, no. Some things, some giants, you got to slay yourself. You get all the counsel you want, land, like some stuff you got to deal with yourself, you alone with God. I came down to an empty church building, dark, nobody here, no ministry, no songs to build up the atmosphere, none of that. I just acknowledged the fact that something that rose in my experience that was a giant. And let me tell you, if I didn't slay that thing, it would have hindered me from my destiny. It would have, giants always are trying to stop you from go where God wants you to go. He's trying to take us somewhere, saints. He's trying to take us somewhere. And it can be no giants hindering us collectively or individually. I didn't know that that time. That giant wasn't trying to make me backslide. Understand the depth of this. It wasn't trying to make go back to the, no, 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 no. It was there to stand between me and what God had for me. And I had to get before God. I remember it was right over here. But the church was different. It was on this side of the altar. And I labored, crying out before God. Lord, this giant's got to go. Lord, it's got to go. Lord, it's got to See, when you're dealing with a giant, you enter into the arena of no return. Y'all ain't hearing me. Either you disregard it, you stay out of it. You run from it, that's fine. But if you're going to engage a giant, you enter into the arena. One of us ain't coming back. 
One of us is not coming up out of here. I understand it. I understand. One of us is not coming up out of here. We about to do some business, bro. Ain't nobody here but, but me, you, amen, God, and the devil. And I just want you to know, I'm standing here. I don't care about Burger King, McDonald's, or Domino's Pizza. But one of us is not coming up out of here. You will not stand between me and what God has for me. You're not going to destroy me. You're not going to destroy my experience with God. Understand feelings. Understand emotions. Understand all of that. But my God is stronger and is able. Many times, individuals, they will go through something in their experience. And that thing will have such an impact on their life. That thing will have such an impact on their experience. They can deal with it to a degree or get better. They're fine. But that thing they went through was so deep and excruciating that that thing produced a giant in their experience. They don't even realize it because they're better. But they don't realize the results and the impact of what you went through is so deep that it's a giant in your experience. And you can come, you can say, okay, I'm better, I'm safe, or whatever. But you will never go where God will have for you to go. There's an authority and a power and an anointing and a destiny, my God, that you will never make it to until you deal with the giant. Until you get before God. It's talking one of them brethren some time ago and I was just saying that there's many people that are slightly healed they're, they're, they're healed but it, it's, it's slightly it's slightly they're not what they used to be no, no. you can't tell it in just general God knows it and they know it but there's a giant that has developed because of something they went through. And sometimes when you go through spiritual trauma, you just thankful of survival. <laughs> and I don't blame, I try, I'm just, you just celebrate, I'm still here, and you sing those songs, I'm still here, I'm still, those songs just minister to you, I made it through, and so have you. You know what, that's awesome, that is, let's celebrate that. But it's something more to that. It ain't just about still being here. I want all. David went and recovered all. I'm, I, I came back and then I realized there was some giants I had to slay. And I stayed before God. And nobody counseled me, coached me or nothing else. But I stayed before God. And I was able to slay, to pray on. And to deal with that which is between me and my destiny. I feel in my spirit, saints. Just like Gideon. They had an army. And God said, we're about to take the world. And there was a battle. He said, we're about to take it. He said, but there's too many. He said, scale it down. I feel God is endeavoring at this end time to bring back families every week. Yeah. To bring back nations, bring back fellowships, bring back, my God, uh, uh, contenders, bring back backsliders, bring back gifts and miracles and powers. But he's saying to us individually and collectively, take your time, seek your experience, evaluate, see if there's any giants anywhere, any circumstance, any situation, any, my God, a thing in your path, anything that needs to be slain, anything that's between you and your dad, anything that's between God having a certain confidence in you. There was a certain way. Yes, David killed a lion and a bear. We celebrate that. But there was a certain way that God didn't have confidence, my God, to appoint, amen, to install him, my God, until that giant was dealt with. Is there anything that God is yet wanting to see from you? A certain way that you deal with that thing. Not just wounded, but David. David slew it. He cut the head off of it. He eliminated the, uh, the propensities of that thing ever coming back. I just feel in my spirit. I feel in my spirit that there are some giants. 
Sometimes there's those that were saved and they want to come back. But there's some giants, some major things, some major hurts. And I'm going to tell you, there is hurt, but there is not much hurt like church hurt. Because that's where you want to go to get to. That's where you, we go to war together. We, we love on each other. We, 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 I, I'm counting on you, bruh. I, you, you fight there, but Jay, I'm fighting over here. But I'm up here, I feel a big stab in my, what's this? It didn't come from the Philistines. What's this? You ever heard of America and the Iraqi war? America lost about 100 people in the whole war, which is a very small number of people to lose in a war. You know how they lost the majority of those people? It was something called friendly fire. They lost the majority of the people, not to the Iraqis, but it was the allies who inadvertently threw the bomb over there and took out 20 of them. <gasps> or inadvertently, many times, the pain could be so deep because it came from an ally and it produces a giant you know what giant it can produce sometimes? It can produce a giant of <coughs> lack of trust. <coughs> I don't trust none of y'all. It's a way I never let nobody. It's the way I, I go to church, I give me a word, and I'm go. I please, I they won't say it. But man, it will be so deep in them. It, I, I, I keep every, I keep, when you got that, I keep everybody at arm's length. I come, I make some, I keep, well, how are you going to keep everybody at arm's length? Come here, bud, Joe. Come here, bud, Bill. Okay, song poet said, come stand on this side, bud, Bill. Bud, Joe, stand on this side. Hold my arms. Okay, let me hold them, stop right there. Arm's length, go over there. Okay, come here, bro. That's the goal. We don't want you to get to the pulpit. You take the pulpit out, we in trouble. That's where we get fed at. That, 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 don't, don't get to the pulpit. Okay, you stay right there. You stay right there. Come here, bro, Chad. Come over here. You're on the enemy side. <clears throat> so you, you're trying to get up there, right? You're trying to get up there. Okay, we over here. Go ahead. Let's try to stop him. No, 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 no. Stay where you at. Don't come over here by me. You keep everybody at arm length because you're dealing with hurt and pain and you don't trust nobody. And I feel the same way. And you deal with the same ways. So you stay over there. We come into the same church. We come in, we, we believe in the same God. We believe in justification, sanctification, unity of God, people, divine healing ordinances, new birth, new time, all that. But stay there and I'm going to stay here believing in that. And I'm going to, you stay there believing in that divine, all, and I'm going to stay here believing in that. You try to get up there and you try to get up there. Go. Stop them. Go. Stop. Stop, y'all. Stop. Why? Go back. I tried to tell y'all my mouth and threaten y'all. Stop, but y'all didn't listen. Okay, now the song poet said in Sayri ranks. Come here, brother. Hold my arm. This is Sayri rank. Hold my arm. This is how armies fight. Say rank. Now come between us. Try it. Try it. Try it. Try it. You ain't coming between us. Why? Because in Sayri rank, do bravely fight. We war sticking close together. How can we fight close together when you got me at arms then? And you got me at arms then? No, it's a giant and it's got to come down. Oh my God, amen. What pain it was. I don't care how hurt you was. The Bible said there is a ball in Gilead. It will heal you. It will heal you. It will reestablish your fight. Reestablish your trust. Trust God. Because when you do go through that and you operate like that, it's not about the people that you really are front to. You're fronting God. You're saying, God, I can't trust you to keep me. God, I can't trust you to... My God. And God is saying, can you give me another chance? Until you give me another chance, put yourself all the way out there. Just trust me. There's a destiny that you will not be able to get to. Sometimes it's unbelief. They just hurt. It's unbelief. So also had this condition. I got something similar. So I just can't. And that giant is there. You know it. It's there. This thing don't get better. It's in the back of your mind. It's just a giant of unbelief. It's a giant of bitterness. I just feel a certain way. It's a giant that I'm dealing with. But I just believe in my spirit that God is saying, if we take the inspiration my God. and personally 
Lord, is there any giants that is between me? Not, you cannot look at this as I ain't about to backslide. No, no, no. That's between me and where God is endeavoring to take me. That's between me and my tomorrow. Lord, I want to slay. Lord, if it's pride, Lord, it's just too much of me. It's too much of me. I'm about me. I'm about me. And you can't use me in a certain way because I'm trying to steal the glory. It don't matter, Lord. It don't matter. Some people need to be saved today. But it's a giant of unbelief. If I get saved, what about this? What about that? What about whatever? God, he that begun a good work in you is faithful. You letting giants stand between you and getting saved and going to your spiritual destiny. Don't take another moment. Why are you going out like this? Quit trying to figure it out and worry about this. Sometimes a giant of a reasoning spirit. Every time you think about getting saved, you know you want to be saved. You're tired of sin. God got plans for you. You ain't even doing that hardly anyway, but you reason yourself. What about this? What about this? What about whatever? I am that I am is still I am that I am. Trust him this morning. Trust him this morning and see what he can do. The Holy Spirit has lifted the burden. I won't be able to walk through the blueprint, but I gave you enough of the blueprint to apply it to our situations this morning. That God can strengthen us and renew us to help us to deal with whatever elevated strong situations in our experiences that are between us and our destiny. Shall we stand? Singers are going to come. We have something over here. It's called a prayer room. We can go in that room and spend time praying. Just spend time in prayer with God. That means that God spoke to me in this word. And I want to pray about some things while the water is troubled and while the inspiration is here. There's an altar here that you can come. And you can pray at this altar. You say people are in front of me. It takes humility to get certain breakthroughs. You can try at home all you want. It takes humility to deal with certain giants. David couldn't deal with the giant in private. He had to deal with him in public. In a moment, we'll offer prayer. But right now, we just feel the spirit is all in this building to save somebody, to restore somebody, to reclaim offices and, and ministries and callings. I, I feel in the spirit gifts. I feel in the spirit some, some, some destinies are going to be reclaimed this morning. I feel in my spirit families restored. I feel in my spirit breakthroughs that individuals have been dealing with hurt and pain and giants for months and years. But I feel in the spirit. The spirit took over a long time ago this morning. Just took completely over. I'll show you my notes. Had really nothing to do with the order. I messed biblical hermeneutics up so bad. Preaching hermeneutics up so bad this morning. But the Holy Ghost had his own hermeneutics. There's some giants that you need prayer on. We're going to ask you to come to the altar and kneel. And just kneel before God and say, Lord, help me. Help me. I feel the inspirations all over this altar, all in that prayer room. I feel lives changing this morning. Destinies changing this morning. I feel backsliders coming back this morning. I feel saints, my God, going on to Canaan. I feel years of giants. I've been struggling in this area for years. I've been struggling with this situation for years. I thought because I disregarded I was going to be okay. I didn't know how you brought it out this morning. The Philistines stood between them and having Canaan in peace. There's a lack of peace that you have. A lack of destiny, a lack of peace. If you don't deal with the giant. See. Am I a soldier of the cross? Wait, Lord, have your way, Lord. The Holy Spirit is here. The Holy Spirit is here. Do your work, Lord. Slay him, Lord. Slay the giants today. Slay him, Lord. Slay him, Lord. Slay him, Lord. Slay him, Lord. Go 
online, slay the giants in the homes. Go right now, Lord, slay them, Lord. We have a destiny to get to, Lord, slay them, Lord. I'm not running another day from you, giant. I'm not going to disregard you another day. I'm not going to learn to live with you. Thank you. Slay it. Slay it this morning. Slay it. Slay it. Come to God. Somebody need to be saved this morning. Somebody need to be saved this morning. Don't allow whatever major situations are between you and God. Well, I got a condition in my body. He's a great healer. I got to deal with some things on my job. Amen. He got a cattle on a thousand hills. He that begun a good work. Just let it go. Just let go. This is your moment. Come back home. Come back home. Don't let the giant stand between you and Zion. Don't let, don't try to figure it out. Don't try to talk your way out. It's not going to make sense. It don't make sense when you're fighting giants. He got too many fingers. He got too many toes. But if you might got take your sling this morning. Have your way, Lord. Have your way, Lord. Have your way, Lord. I feel the spirit. He's ready to put the stone in the sling. He's ready to put it in it right now. I'm not going to put it off, Lord. It's either me or him. One of us has got to go. I will not just be around here. I will not just be another saint. I'm not going to allow. I'm not going to allow things standing between me and what God has for me. Yes, Lord, fight this morning, saints. Fight, fight, saints. Fight this morning, saints. Fight. Don't just pray. Fight this morning. Fight, saints. Fight. Fight, fight, fight. Jesus had a giant. He didn't want to deal with that cross, but he went to Gethsemane. Let's go to Gethsemane, saints. Jesus had giant. Nobody looking down on you because you, I got a giant. I got to deal with Jesus had giants. He didn't want to face the cross. He didn't want to. He despised the shame. But he went to Gethsemane. He tried to get something to pray with him, but that don't work. He didn't understand. I guess he didn't even understand. Jesus, this giant, you got to deal with yourself. You can't count on Peter and James and John. This is me and you. God said, no, no. Me and you. Why? Show them how to deal with giants. Me and you. Me and you. Me and you. My God, my God, my God. Sing another verse of that. Sing another verse of that. Sing another verse of that. The spirit is just moving. Somebody, somebody's giant is trembling right now. There's some husband, my God, some wife. My God, they got a giant in their, in their marriage and that giant is trembling right now. It takes humility, it takes courage. My God, to deal with the giant and it takes timing. The timing is now, the timing is now. Do what you wanna do, but I'm letting you know the timing is now. We are going somewhere and only the giant slayer is God taking with him. He has to know you in a certain level and you gotta know him on a certain level. God is able to deal with whatever. Not talk about it, but be about it. Anybody else, just let go and let God. Let's walk down. Let's walk down. There's still room. There's a choir loft here. There's gospel workers. You can call in right now and just say, I need somebody to pray with me. I got some giants that need to go. I need some real Holy Ghost prayer. I'm acknowledging this. I'm fighting this giant. It's either me or you. It's either me or you. It's either me or you. I'm tired of running from God. I want to run to God. Don't run from him. Run to God. Is there anybody else? The spirit is just all in the room. The spirit is all in the room. The spirit is all in the room. Wrestle and pray. Pray and wrestle. This is Jacob as he's wrestling with the angel. That was a giant. He had some ways about him. He had some ways about him that was hindering him from becoming Israel, which was his destiny. So he had to wrestle with that conniving spirit that he had, that hurt that he had. I don't know what you're dealing with, but let's wrestle with that thing. We're going to open we going to open, my God, the front up for prayer. We're about to go before God 
as sincerely as we know how. There's some giants, I can hear them falling. My God, their heads are coming off. We're not going to knock them down. We're cutting heads off this morning. My God, my God, if you need special prayer, you can call in. Amen. We're there for you right now. They're laborers that will take the phone and pray you through. But more importantly, you kneel on the side of your bed. You get your children together. Sometimes giants of generational curses that need to be broken. Get before God and say, children, I don't have a child for the devil. I'm going to pray. My God, you in the, the kingdom of God. I'm going to pray that old worldly giant that's trying to make you think that the devil going to do you well. I rebuke that giant. We're going to pray. If anybody do need special prayer, this is not for the church. We're only dealing with special prayer. If anybody needs special prayer, you can come down and stand. But this is only those that actually need special prayer for giants. This is not for everybody. Don't bring your children, your, your child's child. This ain't that. But if you honestly are dealing with a giant and you just need special prayer over you, we're going to pray over you, you can come down. If you're not saved, you're dealing with a special giant that's trying to stand between you and salvation. I'm not talking about come down or pray for you. I, want to mind. I ain't talking about that. But you already got a mind to be saved. You want to be saved. But you sense there's a giant. There's something I'm dealing with. There's something. To just, I got to need prayer over that thing that hurt. Maybe it's a pain. Maybe it's a hurt. I don't know. If you're struggling somewhere in your experience. And there's just something that's holding you back. From being all, from going to that next level. And you need prayer on that. Meet me at the altar. Just meet me at the altar. I know it's humility, but it is what it is. We'll pray over you. This is not for everybody. But those that want special prayer over their life. As it pertains to a giant. Maybe it's a family giant. Come down to the altar. Hey, I had giants. From time to time, they'll come back to some big situation. I don't want to deal with that. I ain't trying to deal with that. I'm just trying to go on. And God said, you ain't going where I'm trying to take you. You ain't going where I'm trying to take you, son. You're going to get, get, you're going to get before me. And you're going to deal with that giant. You're going to deal with it. You're going to deal with it, son. Sometimes you've been saying 20 years. And you just realize, hold on, a giant then creeped into my experience. I'm dealing with a giant. This is serious. This is a giant. This is a major situation. And it's crazy because it's not trying to take me out per se, but it's just standing between me and my destiny. And I'm just being real. I'm acknowledging it. I'm for real. It's standing between me. I can try to talk my way around it or still try to sneak my way to where. But if I'm being honest and I'm being real, as the Holy Ghost has spoke this morning, I got to be real. There are some giants. Y'all caught that. There are some giants. That's standing between me and my destiny. And I need prayer on it. Come to the altar right now. Right now. Give us another verse of song as they come. Just give us another verse. Not everybody. This is not for everybody. We don't want to spend virtue on just casual. But this is breakthrough time. This is breakthrough time with giants. This is breakthrough time. I've been there. I've seen many people never get to where I said, why don't why didn't they get there? They knew the Bible, they, they grew up church of God, they knew this. Why didn't they get there? Son, there was a giant. There was a giant, they never slayed it. It didn't take them back to Egypt. It just hindered. It hindered them. Sometimes, like I said, it's hurt, it's pain, years of overlook. That's fine. They want to overlook me all these years. You know what? I, that's fine. That's on them. I hope. I wish them well. But I'm hurting. I'm hurting. Pray. Saints, I feel it to pray for emotional healing. Some, some emotional healing. It's just some emotional healing. I know we believe in divine healing, but there's forms of it. Somebody that needs a healing, a healing, a healing. You can't even attempt to recover until you heal. You, it's a healing you need before you. Somebody needs a healing. Meet us at the altar. Meet us at the altar. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Devil, you've been exposed. You will not stand between me and my destiny another day. I will be church of God all the way. 
I will be all I will be victorious all the way. I will be all that God would have for me to be. I will, I'm a backslider. You're right. I messed up. I'm a ba- but that won't define me. That's not going to define me. That's not going to define me. That will not define me. And it'll never define you when you find you. But it don't define you when you go to your destiny. In fact, when you go to your destiny, you're buried because your anointing is so thick. Every head is bowed. Every head is bowed. Saints, I need y'all to pray with me. I need y'all to pray with me this morning. Every head is bowed. Father, we humble our hearts. As humble as we know how. Father, we're out your way. You're doing something. Father, I'm not even, you're, you're doing your own thing. And I want you to pray your own prayer. The Spirit's got to help me to pray this prayer. Because there's some giants that's got to fall, Lord. And Lord, there are some individuals that are ready. Some giants that's been up for years, decades, Lord God. Father, grew up with them. They're coming down today. I can feel it, Lord. I can feel the church being healed. I can feel families being healed. I can feel restoration in this place. Lord, I can sense victory, dear God. Father, I can sense faith and courage. Father of God, you know exactly what giants are in our midst this morning. Father, we are praying for greater than Goliath to fall. We're praying this morning, Lord God, that you will do your own office work. Father, we are praying for witness. My God, that the giant is done. When David, my God, slew him, he fell. My God, then David took a sword and cut his head off. Father, get the sword out this morning. Sometimes you got to use the own giant's weapon on him. You tried to hurt me my God with unbelief I'm going to take unbelief and be full of faith you tried to hurt me with lack of trust I'm going to my God attack a lack of trust and trust completely Lord you tried to attack me with pride I'm going to my God have humility sometimes you got to use the own giant's weapon on himself and Father to God we cutting heads off and it said they cut their head off And they took that head to Jerusalem. Lord God, sometimes when we slay our giant, it inspires other people that their giants too can fall. Lord, may we take our giant's head and march through Jerusalem, the new Jerusalem, the church of the living God. And let the world know God is still slaying giants. And Father, when he took that giant's head down to the king, Lord God, it said the king said, you're not going back home. In other words, you're not going to be a shepherd no more. God got something greater for you. Lord, he took his promotion. And Jonathan, the king's son, then took all of his armor, all of his sword, which was a sword of succession, the armor of succession, and placed it on David. Father, that's destiny. You got destiny for the church. You got destiny for the saints. Father, this was a a message of destiny. Of destiny, Lord. You're trying to show us something. You've turned this thing. You're trying to show us something. There are some places you want to take us. The giants must fall. Heads must be severed. We must take the head through Jerusalem. We must testify and show the world that we may pursue into our destiny bless everyone that is in the prayer room right now father breakthrough lord breakthrough lord it's real i've been there lord i've been there i've been there i've been there right now i've been there lord it hurts to be at the altar dealing with giants it hurts it's, it's humbling because you got to acknowledge sometimes you call some of your own giants. My God, help us. Some of us call our own giants and we got to acknowledge that thing and just own it. I cause my own giant. I let some go too far that shouldn't have went that far. I'm not blaming nobody else from this day forward. I'm not. That's what that uh, uh, stand. That's what all that is about. Blaming somebody else. They did to know. I'm acknowledging my part. Either the role I played in it or how far I let it go. I'm acknowledging my part. And you would never be healed until or slay a certain giant until you acknowledge your part. Quit blaming other people. Quit having pity parties. Quit calling your same friends talking about they did this and they did that. Forget what they did. What did you do? 
What was your role in it? Even after it was done, why you let it go so far? Everybody's been hurt. Everybody. Jesus was turned his back on. He didn't take that to the cross with him. He said, friend, that which thou doest. Please, Father, we just thank you. Thank you, Lord. We just feel an inspiration in this building. We feel demons trembling. We feel dominions trembling. We feel giants falling. We, feel, we sense heads rolling. Have your way this morning. May we never be the same. May we be able to testify in the days coming, maybe even now, with conviction saints of God a giant that I've been wrestling with that I've been disregarding that I've been walking past for months for years it was in my experience there was a certain authority I just didn't have because I knew it was there but that thing fell by faith that thing fell father we love you from the depths of our heart we commit this word to you we pray for the eternal results in Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Sing us a verse. Sing us a verse as they're walking. Sing us a verse. Sing us a verse. Sing us a verse. Yes. 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 We don't drop the moment. We got to keep it going. Keep it going. Till the Holy Ghost drops. And bless you, saints. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Stay there. Stay there. Stay there till you see blood. Stay there. Stay there. Don't settle with just seeing a body fall. Stay there till you see blood. Stay there.